Welcome to Krav Life. My name is Paul Simos, and today on Train to Vite, we are interviewing Michael Rupel. Now, he joins us all the way from Germany. Uh, Mr. Rupel is a former bodyguard and the founder of Krav Maga Street Defense. As well, he's a board member of the Federation of Israeli Martial Arts. And today he's going to discuss his views on the development of Krav, of Krav Maga. So you don't want to miss it. Now, here at Krav Life, one of the things that we're best known for is creating a community and networking with Kravists all around the world. That's why we bring you all these great interviews. Now, we want you guys to get in on that action as well. That's why we've created our own Krav Life community network. Basically, it's a place where, you know, like-minded people like, uh, like you and I, uh, Kravis can get together and discuss everything Krav Maga related. Uh, plus, every once in a while, we drop uh, profiles, articles, and training, and there's so much more all for free. So just go to mycrovlife.com and sign up for the free community and start networking with Kravists from all over the world. And while you're there, be sure to check out our Krav Maga directory and find a place to train near you. So without further delay, here's Michael Rupel. It happened. All right. So welcome to the show, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Man. Um, not a problem. It's a, it's an honor to have you. Now, for the members of our audience that don't know who you are, can you uh, introduce yourself a little bit? <laughs> so my name is Michael Ripple. I'm the founder of uh, Krav Maga Street Defense. Yes. So I do Krav Maga for 25 years now, and uh, yeah. Okay. So, I think so you, you know some some something about me. <laughs> yes, I, I know I know a little bit about you. Yes. Um, so, um, where did it all start for you? Like, um, did you have uh, martial arts experience before uh, Krav Maga, or was Krav Maga like the first thing that you ever did? Um, I start very late with Krav Maga, um, uh, with with the martial arts. I think I was uh, seventeen. Mm -hmm. So then I start with Thai boxing and I do it for a few years and uh, then I go in to the security area and mm -hmm. later I was a professional bodyguard and um, then I, I get in touch with, uh, with the Krav Maga just for myself, just to getting better to protect my clients. Okay. And uh, you, you have uh, protected uh, some famous people, correct? Some, yes. <laughs> some, a few. A few. What, what was that like? Like, what's it, what's it like dealing um, in that personal protection um, or bodyguarding uh, some famous people? Like, what's that sort of thing like? You know, it's, it's not like, like, like you see it in the movie. Yeah, it's a lot of work, uh, a lot of uh, research. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's not that you that you have muscles, uh, sunglasses, and look look bad, you know. So it's 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 much much more. And uh, it, it was a nice time. I do it twenty years of my life. It was mm -hmm. a good time. Sometimes crazy, but it was a good time. Nice. So when you got involved with Krav Maga, like um, who who did you? get involved with and, and, and train with and all that stuff. Yeah. I saw, I saw a picture one day in the newspaper. It was a uh, gun disarming from behind. So you, you remember the picture with the elbow in the face and the gun is here, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, there was written Krav Maga. I, I never heard about it. And, but uh, the, the picture triggered me. Yes. Because of the gun. And I think, okay, it sounds interesting. It comes from Israel. So it was the first seminar here in Germany with the Israeli guy. His name was Amnon Maor. And he was the first one they bring Krav Maga to Germany. And uh, so I go to the, to the seminar and I was young. I, I, I was ready to fight. And, 
the first two hours was just grip release, you know? Mm. And I was angry, you know? So I was always thinking, what the shit? I go home, you know? <laughs> and then after a while, I already want, want to go home. He started to open the box with, uh, with gun and knife. And so this catch me again. And then I found it interesting. So I start to learn Krav Maga in this time. Okay. So, so what was the thing that most impressed you about Krav Maga that kept you in it for all these years? It was simple first, you know, I, you look at it and then you think, why? Why you don't, don't come to this solution, you know? It was very simple. Uh, at this time for me and so I start to learn it but later later on many years later um, I make some changes because um, I train with all my guys from from the bodyguard company and you know everybody look at like me and then uh, I tell them look today we train you know I show you a little bit Krav Maga and uh, so I give them the gun and tell him to fret me and uh, I tried to disarm the guys, but it was not possible with the, with the Krav Maga technique I learned. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised. And I think to myself, wow, it doesn't work in this way we train in the gym. So, so where is the mistake? And the mistake was the, the guys react, you know. Immediately, I, if I grab the gun, the guys getting crazy. They pull back, they start to fight, and I was not able to disarm, you know, so I was disappointed about this because I learned it uh, for a few years and uh, now I see it doesn't work, you know, and uh, so I start to make some changes, you know, for example, the, the most people even today, they go to a gun and start to punch, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, trust me, doesn't matter how strong, doesn't matter how fast you are. If someone start to react, you will lose and you will lose yeah. not only the fight, you will lose your life, you know. So and I teach most of the time um, that I go with, with two hands immediately to the gun to prevent the pulling back reflex. Mm -hmm. So so why do you think um, that uh... Kravists continued to teach um, techniques that didn't uh, take the pull reflex into account. You know, the problem is what I, you know, I, I study many, many years, um, also different kind of, of styles of Krav Maga, and, uh, but the most of the guy, their focus was on making business. Mm. You know, everybody want big schools, many schools, and uh, this cannot be, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a money making system. And this was not my view because uh, for me it's important. If someone come in my gym, I will give him the best tools I have that he can survive in the street. Okay. So this was always my focus. My focus was, what was not that I, uh, think, okay, I, I need in, in 10 years, I need many schools, you know, I need many instructors, I need this, I need that. My focus was always on training. Training and techniques, they work under stress, under pressure. Okay. And, um, and so how, how do you uh, test that? Like, how do you, how do you stress, how do you particularly str stress test a, a technique to make sure that it works for, you know, the, the little woman versus and, and a big guy and works for everybody. Right. Yeah. 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 So first of all, I train with, with my strong guys, mm -hmm. you know, and all of them are, are from uh, security, martial arts, crazy guys from the streets, you know, and they are very strong and crazy and uh, they act like a, like a violent guy. And so I train with them. And if I found a way that it works, then I put it into my group. Right. Yeah, let's say I have uh, 30 people on the mat and I show them now the technique. It's, it's like a, 
<laughs> it's it's like a search, you know. So I search for weak things, and for me, it's not important that I can make the techniques. For me, it's important that the weakest part, the weakest person in my gym, can make it happen. Mm -hmm. So, and if I see it is good, then I take it and I work on this and then and, and I bring it out. And if not, I throw it away and we train more, you know, this is the way we do it. And then uh, the next is um, I have many friends in Israel in very good positions. And from time to time, if I'm in, in Israel, so we train together and uh, the guys ask me, or, or we have a problem with some solutions, you know, and they ask me, Michael, what we can do here, what, what we can do there. And we train together and uh, until we have a solution for this problem. Mm, okay. Uh, so are there ever any circumstances where you have a technique and it works fine for your crazy guys and stuff and, and those people, but it doesn't work so well for um, the smaller person? Do you let the crazy guys keep the technique and then you make adjustments for the smaller person or do no, you want a no, technique no, no. that works yeah. for everybody? Yeah, if the techniques doesn't work for the smaller people, I throw it out. Okay. So everything what I teach must be work for weaker people, you know? I don't teach uh, only for, for strong people, you know? If, if uh, people look at me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big, I have tattoos, you know? They think, ah, oh, you know, he can do everything, but what is about uh, the smaller people? But I teach just for smaller people. If, if they can do it, everybody can do it. Okay. And so how, well, not how many, but like uh, how, ma how, many, how many of the old style techniques have, have you uh, managed to, to keep or uh, have you modified it completely? You know, the most of the gun and knife stuff, mm -hmm. you know, because for me, especially gun and knife, you know, if you make a mistake, you die. If you yeah. make a mistake, you die. And I, it's, it's my responsibility, you know, if you, if you are my students and I show you some shit and maybe one day you go in a situation and it doesn't work, you will die. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's my responsibility that everything I, I need to believe that it works. Okay. So my focus, it's, it's a completely different. I, yes, money to making money is important, of course, but the first focus I have is to bring good techniques yeah, mm -hmm. to the students and uh, they need to work. So I work a lot on every day I train with my guys and, and to, to create something, you know? Yeah, yeah that, that, it's, it's interesting uh, because considering that Krav, like, that Krav Maga comes from Israel, you would think that um, the uh, the knife and and the gun techniques coming out of Israel would be already the the best and not need modification. Um, why like why would it be that way? Do you think? I don't know. I have many friends, you know, yeah. and and uh, friends in in top position in in, in Israel, and uh, I asked them many times, you know, why you still do, do it, you know? And mm -hmm. the question is always, yeah, you know, we need to bring the soldiers, the, the, the agents, um, that they go from zero to 200 in a second to aggression, yes? Yeah. And I say, yes, I understand completely. But if you lose the situation, the, the, your aggression, is, it's, it doesn't help you, you know? So for me, yes, of course, I go with surprise and full speed and aggression in the situation. Mm -hmm. But first, my, my view, I need control the weapon. I try to control the weapon the best I can. And then I destroy the guy, not before. Okay. So first it's control and, and then it's the, the aggression, right? Or the uh, attacking the person. You know, the, the, the success key for, for all the attacks on the street is always surprise, speed, aggression. Mm -hmm. So surprise, in, that, in, that, in that order? In that order? 
Yeah, surprise the attacker and then go inside with full speed and aggression. Okay. Yeah, like a special unit. They do the same. So, mm -hmm. and it works uh, in the street in the same way. Yes. So, so my focus is more that um, I, I protect myself with more control about the gun or about the knife. Yes. Mm -hmm. So would the act of grabbing grabbing the gun and grabbing uh, the, the wrist or the elbow, um, is that your element of surprise? And then that leads into control because the bad guy wouldn't necessarily expect you to grab at his weapon. You know, the bad guy, is if it's stupid enough to come close, yeah? yeah. Um, and if he hesitate to shoot, if someone come and shoot immediately, you can do nothing. You, you right. will die, yes? But if he hesitate just two, three seconds and you have the right technique and you have the will to do it, you can survive. It's, it's, uh, it's possible, you know, depends on the situation. Not every, every situation is the same. Right. Uh, and is that something that you focus on uh, in, your, in your training, just a bunch of different scenarios and, and how, to, how to approach them? Yeah, it's always we do. Uh, first of all, we 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 like we build a house. You know, if you build a house, you need a strong ground. Right. Yes. And then you need the walls and on the end the roof. And this is how we build the training. You know, um, we start with the with the technique training. Yes. Yeah? So for understanding why we do it, and then comes pressure pressure training under under crazy circumstances always must be functional under pressure. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Right. That, may, that makes sense. Um, so one of the things that uh, you're kind of known for is the, uh, is the fast disarm of the gun, right? How, <laughs> how, did, how, how did that come about? Um, yeah, I, I, I tell it to you. Good that you ask. Um, you know, I had a problem. If I'm in a sitting position, yes, mm -hmm. if I'm in a sitting position, doesn't matter if I'm maybe in the car or maybe I sit on the ground or whatever, or I'm on the knees and the guy threatened me and I go with, with two hands on the gun, yes, and mm -hmm. try to do this technique, um, he's still able to pull. So he can bring me out of balance and I lose the control, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I look for something else. And then I found the, the problem, the enemy about gun and knife is the pulling back reflex. Yeah. It's always the same. If you do something, the attacker will do something. Yes. It's mm -hmm. not like you train with your partner. If you do something, the attacker will go crazy. And this you need to keep in your mind. Mm -hmm. So my focus was that uh, I need to prevent this pulling back reflex, I need control. So what we do is that we go in one line to the gun, yes? And with this end, I go to the part of the thumb, yes? Mm -hmm. And immediately, if I'm there already, it's not possible for him to pull back anymore because I already have the control, yes? And uh, so this was the reason I create this technique because of the sitting position on the ground or on the chair. And of course, it works very well if you stay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do it for many, many years. I think I put it outside first time on YouTube, let's say 2000, 2007, 2006, something like this. Yeah. I don't know. And uh, so before, I don't see it. Before, I don't see it, you know. In Germany, before... Um, I start long time ago with the Krav Maga and then the IKMF came, you know, and then they start to bash a little bit against other Krav Maga instructors. And some of the guys say, yeah, you know what? Um, don't go to Michael because this is not Krav Maga what he teach. Mm. Yeah, because I don't do this. Yes. So yeah. if, you, if you don't do it, it's no Krav Maga. <laughs> And I tell them, look, guys, it's no problem. You can think what you want. Come to my gym and we train. Come to my gym and show me something better. 
nobody come, you know. Mm. And I was, uh, I think, 2000, I think 2008 or 2007, I was in Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in the training. It was the last day of training. And some of the guys came to me and asked me, Michael, can you show me your gun and your knife techniques again? I say, yes, I can show it to you. And he said, can I record it? I say, okay, feel free, do it, yes. And so I show him some of my techniques, he recorded, and then I fly back to Germany. After three weeks, he called me and said, Michael, um, I show your stuff some people here. I say, okay, cool. <laughs> and he say, okay, they was very surprised about it, and they want to learn it. And I tell him, okay, next time if I come to Israel, yeah, we can do it. He say, no, 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 you don't understand. We come to you. I say, yes, really? You won't come to me? Yes, we come. So they come with some people to Germany, and uh, but people from very high positions in some some units, yes? Yeah. And we train, we train uh, this stuff, you know? And before, sometimes you doubt about yourself, you know? Because mm -hmm. uh, some, I'm, I'm not the guy they say, you know, I'm the best. I'm, you know, I, I have right all the time. This, this is not me. Um, I, sometimes I ask myself, maybe the other guy have, have right, you know. So, mm -hmm. But in the time the Israelis come to Germany to learn my techniques, I know I'm, I was on the, right, uh, on the right spot, you know. So from this time, I don't look right. I don't look left. I just go my way. Mm -hmm. until today that's and and it seems to to have worked out out for you because uh you've been um so I've, I've seen that you you've taught like some some high high level uh, security forces and and stuff like that like the the chinese air marshals was one of them right yeah it was the uh, combat uh, police combat expert group this is a uh, mm -hmm. Police group, they um, train all the units in, in China and they look always for some instructors. They show them something uh, special. Yeah. How is it working with the Chinese? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they are funny. They are very funny. So they order me for, for some special techniques because of gun and knife in close, yeah. close rooms and let's say also in the, in the airplane for, for air marshals. Mm -hmm. And there were SWAT teams there, all kind of people. But um, from time to time, they, they come and say, Michael, um, we have another problem. What do you think about this? Can you show us this? Can you show us that, you know? So mm -hmm. they was nice. I had a very good time, but they tried to use you, you know? So mm -hmm. they, they record everything what you say, everything what you do. It's a big camera on you and uh, so after a while I, I tell them look I can I can show it to you next time <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they don't get it all at once right yeah yeah, yeah really <laughs> yeah yeah no that's that's fun it, it's and, and I think that's part of the um, the spirit of of Krav Maga is to learn from each other right so that um s someone someone else might have something better and it's and it's important to keep an open mind and i'm glad that that people started listening to you um so how did you get involved with uh with fema then um you know shuki is a, is a is is like my brother mm -hmm. um he was uh, in the fema and uh, he asked me um, if I will join the FEMA. And for me, it was very important that um, the organization look for quality, you know, because um, the problem today is uh, every day if I open the computer, I see new grandmasters, new organization, you know, and the most of them, they have no clue about Israel. 
they, don't, they have no clue about uh, Krav Maga and they call them Grandmaster, Sixtan, I don't know what. And I don't like this, you know. I work mm -hmm. my ass off for everything. And yeah. I, love, I don't like people like this because it's not good for the Krav Maga. And it's also not good for the people because Krav Maga, it's a good system. Yes, but you need a good instructor. And yeah. this is the game. And many people try to jump on the, on the, on the train of the success of the name of Krav Maga. Right. And this I don't like. So the reason because I go into the femur was uh, that we do something for the quality. Mm -hmm. yes, so um, I'm, I'm one of the board directors there. And so we try to, to build um, umbrella for Israeli martial arts, but for people they really, um, yeah, won't, really won't learn to Krav Maga. And, and uh, you know, for, for me, it's Krav Maga, not just uh, Krav Maga. It's connected to Israel, and I'm very connected to Israel. Also here in, in, in Germany, in my city, I have, we have a beautiful synagogue. And mm -hmm. from time to time, I go there with my new students. Today, it's a, it's a museum for Israeli culture. And so for me, it's important that the people understand it's not just a martial art. Yes. You, you see, if you, if you, today, you can get killed, you know, if you, if you go with this and the, and the wrong people see it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you, you have a shirt with the star of David. David. Yeah. Today, somebody kill you, you know, and the people need to understand it's not just the martial art. It's a way of life. It's a way of thinking. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and is... Is the situation in, in Germany, um, like, is there a lot of tension between, um, you know, Jew, uh, Jewish Jews and uh, neo-Nazis and, uh, and Arabs? Like, is, is that a thing there or is that more uh, outside of? You know, I do it now for 25 years. And uh, sometimes if... You know, I have here also a big star of David of my of my arm. Mm -hmm. Here I have my master on my chest, you know, also with the Israeli flag. And sometimes I, I see some guys, they look at me and you see the hate, you know. But what they can do? Nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So if they try something, it was uh, yeah. not, not good for them. No, and, definitely not. Uh, so, so from time to time, you, you see some people from... I don't know if it's Nazi or, or maybe from, from other countries, you know, mm -hmm. but you see it, you know, and maybe if you are weaker people, they will attack you. It can happen, but it's not only in Germany, it's all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We, we, we have our share of that, uh, uh, here as well. Um, so if you had a, um, kind of like a, a a tip or a suggestion for anyone that's looking into Krav Maga or start or just starting Krav Maga, where, what would you, what would you say to them? You know, today you have Google. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yep. if you want to learn something, Google, Google, take some information, you know, if you found a homepage and there is written Krav Maga, blah, blah, blah. And uh, there are not so many information. That means there is nothing. Mm -hmm. So if you look to my site, there are much, much information, maybe too much. But because I want, I want you know, I can, everything I can show you in, in, in I, I, I can read it to you, I can show it to you in pictures and videos and, and look for someone they have experience, you know, mm -hmm. they, he is, connected with Israel, you have a good education. Don't go to the next karate school and uh, where is, you know, he do 20 years craft, uh, karate and it doesn't work so well and then he do Krav Maga. Mm -hmm. So, but you can, you can see it. You can see it if you look to the home pages, you, you can see it. Yeah. Cool. And for, for yourself, 
Um, where, where do you see your career going from here? Like, do you have any, any goals that, that you've set for yourself or, um, any cool projects coming up? I tell you, I never had a, had a goal, you know, I, I just go with the flow, (laughs) you know? Yes, really. I I never want to have uh, many students, you know? So I started with three students for many, many years. And now I think we have maybe something like 4,000 students in the world. Yeah. And uh, I also don't look for, for many schools. I do it now 25 years and we have 25 schools. Okay. Okay, not much. Um, because I don't take everybody. Right. Yeah, people write me and say, oh, I, I, I want a black belt in Krav Maga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can come and train with me. You know, so some of the people try to buy it. I say, I don't want your money. Come and sweat. Show me. Show me what you can do. You know, mm. so this is the way. I, I, I don't have a goal. You know, for me, it's important that, uh, yeah, I try to make the world a little bit safer and better. And um, I work with, with many units together. Um, I work with, with my private clients together. So for me, it's important that I give them the best I can. All right. So now, now that everything's opening up, do you have any uh, plans to, uh, to tour or do, uh, do any seminars? Any plans to come to North America? Um, the next is um, Texas. Okay. I have a sheriff department in Texas. They want a big course for some special units there. But uh, I'm not sure if it's possible this year because I'm very busy here at the moment. Yeah. And um, so maybe next year. This year I do some seminars here in Germany mm-hmm. in, my, in my gym. So some instructor education, some weapon instructor educations, some civilian seminars and... Uh, but out of the country, I think realistically, is it uh, next year? Yeah. Uh, hopefully, everything stay, stays open uh, long enough for uh, for us to uh, get to see you, um, and hopefully, I get to get to meet you in person and uh, and get to train I with you. Forward. I look forward to yeah. this. Yes, of course. Yeah, need an ex. I don't go to Europe very often, but if, uh, if I'm ever in Germany, I'm definitely coming coming over there. Um, you're welcome. Perfect. So I want to thank you for your time. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, uh, what is the best way to do that? Um, they can connect me about uh, Facebook under Michael Ripple, my name. They can connect me under my system, Krav Maga Street Defense. Mm-hmm. And you found me on, on Instagram. You found me on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have, I think, almost 300 videos on, on YouTube for, of many stuff. And uh, yeah, you have many ways to find me. The people can connect you and you can send yeah, them. We'll definitely do that. Yeah, definitely do that. And we can definitely add your, uh, your studio to our uh, online uh, directory of Krav Maga Studios to our worldwide directory. And, uh, and they can connect with you that way, too. All right. Well, thank you for for coming on the show. It's uh, been a pleasure talking with you and very insightful. Um, And hopefully come back on and we can discuss other Krav Maga related topics in the future. Always. Yeah, always. You're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Awesome. So I want to thank Mr. Rupel for being on the show. And I want to thank you for listening in. Now, if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, uh, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. And to catch all the latest for me, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at my underscore Krav underscore life, and on Facebook and YouTube just by searching my Krav life, and it'll take you right to us. So once again, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.